In an age of commandos, mech commander and total war, you really had to be doing something spectacular to get noticed as a real-time tactics game at the turn of the millennium. With gaming about to take an irreversible leap into fully realised 3D where dynamic backgrounds would put the player closer to the action than ever before, anything with a static setting was at its absolute peak. Regardless though, Desperados Wanted Dead or Alive was a highlight from this golden age of think and point and click mayhem. It combined the ability to barge into a saloon and shoot all your problems to death with an all too rare stealth mechanic that encouraged players to actually strategize before going for their holsters. Its sequel, Desperados 2, neatly built on the premise, but when plans for a third installment of the game were shelled, that looked like being it for the series. Until now! Desperados 3 has just arrived on PS4, Xbox and PC, so my name is Adam Cleary and here is everything you need to know about Desperados 3. Number 10, it's a prequel. Despite being the long-awaited fourth installment in the franchise, Desperados 3 is actually a prequel. Set before the events of Desperados Wanted Dead or Alive, the game takes us back to the harsh and unforgiving frontier west of the 1870s, and sets itself in Louisiana, Colorado, Mexico and a number of other locations. The game does, however, still see a return for series protagonist John Cooper, last seen casually thwarting the Mexican revolutionary El Cortador's plan to assassinate the President of the United States, and looks to explore his backstory. How he came to lead the group and how he's become the notorious bounty hunter we saw in the franchise's initial 2001 release. John is joined by familiar faces Doc McCoy and Kate O'Hara, as well as new additions to the series Hector Mendoza and Isabel Moreau. All five make up the game's selection of playable characters and each comes with the usual array of unique abilities designed to help you navigate the various missions. Number 9, it's a character story first and foremost. For all Desperados 3 does tell a well-worn tale of blood-soaked outlaw revenge, it's at its heart actually a compelling character story. Yes, this is John Cooper's adventure, but the game is at its glorious best when it builds on the unlikely bonds being formed between our ragtag group of undesirables. With a central campaign that unravels dramatically across its surprisingly lengthy runtime, the most enjoyable moments by far focus on the dynamics between the various members of the crew. With each character being drastically different in regards to how they play, the fact that the game constantly reflects this in their personalities is a touch that adds impressive depth. Given that each of our five rogues need to utilize their own abilities to succeed on mission, the added element of combination play feeds into their developing relationships. In short, the key to a lot of scenarios is their ability to directly combine special powers, and this sense of burgeoning if often reluctant teamwork is equally as prominent in the story itself. Number 8, it looks gorgeous. Now, 2001 was many things, but a golden age for video game graphics it was not. Desperados Wanted Dead or Alive looked absolutely fine, but it wasn't a game selling you on the visuals alone. 14 years is a long ass time though, and Desperados 3 looks absolutely stunning. The dynamic nature of the lightning is exceptional, and even small details like building construction and lol demolition look like they've had serious thought and time dedicated to them. Even water, normally the Achilles heel of isometric level design, garners praise here. But not as much as how funny this man's hat falling off is. One major achievement though is in the natural movement of the character models. Sneaking, crawling, walking and running all feel like they've been drawn for a game set far closer to the ground, and the variety in the combat and special ability usage means we're well beyond the hitbox clunk of older generations. Number 7, RTT is back baby! Real-time tactics games get a bit of a bad rep these days. Back in 2001 when Desperados first released, they were up there with RPGs and FPS games as the holy trinity of gaming genres. But now they've faded into the background in favour of more elaborate formats. Part of this is, of course, down to their popularity on the mobile gaming market. The restrictions of handheld devices mean that their simple point-and-click interface lends itself well to a static top-down viewpoint, and the detailed inventory and menu systems is something that comes naturally to a device designed for scrolling thumbs. But Desperados 3 isn't, strictly speaking, an RTS game. It's being billed as a real-time tactical stealth game, and in fairness, it's very difficult to dispute that description. Players who are more used to the dumb fun of on mass strategy will be astonished to see just how much can be achieved in this format with every mission provoking a creative and challenging test of your mettle. Number 6, it's the Wild West, but not as you know it. If you're one of the, uh, let's see how many people was it, ah yes, all people who played Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll be more than well versed in the tropes of the Wild West. 
You wear a hat, you fire a pistol, someone shouts varmin at you, and then you just sort of get TB and die. It's a genre that's become so hamstrung by its own tropes that Hollywood managed to do it entirely to death in the space of two decades. They're a rare treat now in any medium, but when they do achieve mainstream penetration, they still rarely deviate from the norm. Desperados 3, however, in a move likely born out of audience necessity as much as creative ambition, takes the classic Western feel and adds some much-needed additional dimensions. Specifically, the introduction of Isabel as a voodoo practitioner. Bringing elements of the supernatural into play here allows for some absurdly inventive solutions to the game's many hurdles. Her ability to link two enemies together, meaning whatever happens to one of them also happens to the other, radically changes your approach to several of the levels, and the game feels at its dynamic best when she's introduced midway through. Number 5, the play style is a big deal. While the game plays out entirely in real time, the necessity in forward planning means that there's a new feature in Desperados 3 that dramatically alters up the way it plays. You are now free to pause the game in order to plan out and issue the commands for a series of synchronized actions between all of your characters. This allows you to plot out a coordinated strategy for achieving your objectives, and saves you the blind panic of quickly flicking between different areas of the map as you desperately try to take advantage of a rapidly disappearing window of opportunity. Now you can piece together complex plans in advance and watch as your band of heroes executes them with deadly synergy. Now, if you worry that makes the game sound too easy, then god jeez, rest assured that the planning stage of these lightning strikes comes along as the result of the game's reliance on trial and error. Given the incredibly high fail rate for pretty much any approach you take, you'll be tweaking all of your tactics with several, sometimes several dozen, save and reload scenarios. If repetition isn't your thing, it can feel a bit grindy, but the satisfaction to be had from FINALLY pulling off a skilled multi-prong attack is off the charts. Number 4, the reviews are good. At the time of writing, Desperados 3 is sitting on an 86% on Metacritic, with a user score even higher at 8.9. The Games Machine's review said Desperados 3 is a love letter to a genre of a long-forgotten past beautifully crafted in every single detail. IGN said, In Desperados 3, the series enjoys the most triumphant comeback in the Western genre since Clint Eastwood made Unforgiven. PC Gamer also reiterating, Desperados 3 turns the Wild West into a brilliant tactical playground that will fill you with lead over and over again. And the thing is, franchise rebirths tend to walk a very precarious tightrope, especially when they're determined to still play and feel like their forebears. Gaming tastes move on as quickly as gaming genres become outdated, and returning to the RTS format some 14 years after the last instalment could have left this feeling like a relic with little more than a new lick of paint. Thankfully though, by taking what's worked so well for Desperados in the past, adding a story that's familiar to old players yet still accessible for the new, and taking heed of how the genre has moved on since, the results are more than worthy of the acclaim. Number 3, it's multi-platform. Arguably the biggest risk in this whole project is that while Desperados 3 returns to the franchise's traditional home of the PC, it's also being made available on consoles for the very first time. Publishers THQ Nordic taking the unconventional approach of releasing the game on Xbox One and PS4 alongside its arrival on desktop. Playing with a controller already worked really well in Shadow Tactics and the developers managed to improve this even more. There are reviews out there that give 100 out of 100 scores on Xbox and PS4 scored quite a lot of 90s. Halo Wars in particular managed to earn more positive reviews on console purely down to the dearth of other options available in this genre, showing that there's definitely a gap in the market here for Desperados 3. Number 2, it'll scratch that Hitman itch. Desperados 3 is not Hitman. In fairness, a lot of Hitman games weren't even Hitman, but they were at least trying to replicate that patented formula of presenting players with a singular problem, but allowing them almost total freedom in deciding how to solve it. Here is your target, now off you go isn't a genre, but it probably should be. Early on in Desperados 3, the game puts all its cards on the table and tells you that you can have the exact same sort of fun here. Infiltrating a town with several occupants all in need of a thorough killing, simply listening in to the NPC's conversations reveals several methods by which you can accomplish this. You are free to just kick the saloon doors in and shoot the place up, or you can take more clandestine approaches and fit them for a toe tag without ever going near them. Every mission features a seemingly limitless scope for completion, with the addition of more and more characters expanding your options further. While this means you're free to play the game as sneaky or as gory as you like, it also means that going back to the drawing board is always an enticing prospect. 
Number one, it's out now and you can play it for free. Final point of housekeeping here, Desperados 3 released June 16th for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and is available digitally on both consoles online stores and on Steam. Versions for both macOS and Linux will be along in the summer. However, if you want to try the game out, there is currently a free demo for digital download on both Steam and GOG, which includes both of the game's first two missions. And Xbox One players can also get their hands on a trial version. There are also three DLC packs scheduled for release over the coming months with additional challenge missions for the core game in the pipeline too. Oh, and if that's still not enough for you, there is a trailer out and it is all kinds of something. So they have it, those are 10 things you need to know about Desperado 3, read to you by a man who got actually told off by his own mother for spending an entire summer playing Commandos. Let me know what you made of it all in the comments below, and of course don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.